Full day of volleyball, folks. Straight out the gate, it's 13 seed BYU taking on the fourth seeded Kentucky Wildcats. And for the first time in a long time, five years to be exact, the Wildcats have made it to the round of 16. And what's interesting about this side of the bracket is four of the five unseeded teams that advance are in the Kentucky and Penn State Regional. We'll see Colorado here later today as we say hello and welcome inside Memorial Coliseum. Tiffany Green with the former Florida setter and Missy Whittemore. Well, BYU was here in the regional back in 2015 while the Wildcats had to sit by and watch. But this year they've earned a number four overall seed in the tournament and they're led by one of their greatest senior classes ever, including the fiery Kaz Brown, who just happens to be a blocking force at the net. However, they're gonna have to battle a BYU squad that is led by junior outside hitter hitter Veronica Jones Perry. She is coming off of an explosive performance against Oregon where she put down 27 kills on a 535 hitting clip. But that's not even her best performance of the season. Earlier this year, she registered 34 kills in a single match. It's hard to believe that for the first time she's playing six rotations, she's a special talent. Speaking of special talents, how about sophomore outside hitter Leah Edmond for Kentucky. This year she was named the Southeast Region Player of the Year just a year after being named the Region Freshman of the Year. In their five-set thriller over Western Kentucky, she led the team with 22 kills. Well, certainly we will see some terrific outsides, but also some stellar defense from a couple of liberos. These are going to be two fun players to watch. They are competitors. Mary Lake of BYU had 20 of the team's 40 digs versus Oregon, and Dushek of Kentucky, the three-time SEC libero of the year, is a big reason why Kentucky is always in system and putting up huge offensive numbers. Well, Heather Olmstead in her third season with the BYU Cougars told us yesterday that this is a pretty evenly matched competition here this afternoon. She took over for her brother. Sean was an assistant with the Cougars for a while, and she's done a terrific job, 87 and 10, since taking over the reins. On the other side, she will see a young man who is very good at strategizing and figuring things out in Craig Skinner. 301 career wins. He picked up that 300th win in the NCAA first round match against East Tennessee State. So let's take a look at how both these teams plan for success. Brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. So when we see what's at stake here this afternoon, Missy, give us an idea of what folks can look forward to. You know, for Kentucky, re receiving that overall number four seed, they have a lot of pressure on their back. And so they're really trying to live up to that seed. And for BYU, this is a team who, as an unseeded team, made a trip to the national finals in 2014. And they would like nothing more than to repeat that trip. What's at stake here this afternoon? There it is, that first regional final since 2014 for BYU and, of course, for Kentucky. Can they live up to the seed as they will have here in this regional also the overall number five seed in Nebraska who will take on Colorado in the second match here in Lexington today. And obviously, Kentucky getting that number four seed. A lot of conversation around the world of volleyball, and certainly the Huskers may come in fired up, but I know the Wildcats and Cougars are as well. Wildcats were number one in the RPI, sixth in the ABCA poll, right behind them, BYU at seven. Just the second overall meeting. You gotta go back to 1990 when these last two teams met. For many of these young ladies, they may not have even been born at that time. <laughs> Starting things off and ready to serve it is Cindy Martindale, the junior DS out of Utah, transferred in from Snow College as we're underway. Avery Skinner, four and white. We'll see her get started early on Point Kentucky. The freshman the outside. Excuse me, Tiffany, that freshman outside, as you just mentioned, who's having a fantastic tournament for the Cats, has put up 14 kills in both the first and second round. Gabby Curry on the serve, one of the DSs for the Wildcats, with sails just wide. Good look there, and one of the Haddock twins, and Lacey Haddock. She plays with her sister, Lindy Haddock, who happens to be the setter for the Cougars. And there's Veronica Jones-Perry 
blue, number 12. Get used to it, but how about seven white and Kaz Brown? You said she's a fiery competitor and she gets them going. Their middle blocker, Kaz Brown, one of the dominant seniors on this team who's really put this Kentucky Wildcats team on the map in terms of being a national power, not just a Southeastern Conference power. She shares that senior class with four others, including Ashley Duchek. And there's Cozy Burnett out of the middle. The fifth year senior out of San Diego, California, has made the transition to middle blocker, and it's, it's paid dividends for BYU. What a great story she is, having played on the right side for four years and being asked to make that transition to the middle and, of course, being willing to do whatever it is to make her team back. The free ball over. BYU with an opportunity. The setter's dub, Lindy Haddock, reads it perfectly. I like the fact that Lindy Haddock goes to the dump early in this match. She's not an overly offensive setter, but when you do that early, you now give Kentucky another wrinkle to think about in terms of defense. Three, two advantage. Make it four, two for BYU. Came into this match 30 and two on the season. 17 and one in the West Coast Conference shared the title with San Diego. Madison Lilly sets it up for Emily Franklin, number three in wide, a terrific setter for the Wildcats. Tooling the block is Jones Berry. A great job there by Jones Perry because realize she's going to have blockers in her face all night. Kaz Brown, her counterpart in the middle, Emily Franklin for Kentucky, is also a senior, two of the best blockers in this program in history. And so BYU will have to be creative in their shot selection. Well, it's been something consistent all season for this Kentucky Wildcats offense. Madison Lilly to Leah Edwin. Third in the nation in hitting percentage at 321. Lily has done a terrific job, again, just as the freshman. Freshman of the year coming out of the Southeastern Conference. Buck set to Edmund. Edmund. Jones Perry once again, 4.8 kills per set coming into this afternoon's match. Well, the highlight completely belongs to Veronica Jones Perry there, but it's the quality touch at the net by Cozy Burnett, that player who just made the move to the middle this year, that really sets that BYU defense up to be able to get a transition kill there. BYU has doubled their lead. Franklin right to Jones Perry, gets it over. Does McKenna Miller. Jaffed at the net, just off the head of Brooke Morgan, 7-3. BYU. How about Lindy Haddock using that momentum as she rushes forward to take on the middle blocker there in the joust. We talked to Coach Olmstead about glue players on her team who don't get all the accolades but make all the difference, and she was quick to name Lindy Haddock. Quickly out the gate, BYU on a 6-1 run to open up this first frame. Here out of back row, the attack of Jones Perry and the net violation called on the Cougars. And the up official actually makes the motion for four contacts. They're saying that that swing from Veronica Jones Perry out of the back row did not clear the net tape. And that's a great replay right there as you see it bounce off that net tape. So when BYU then made the play, that was fourth contact. Cozy Burnett from the right pin. She's averaging two and a half kills in this NCAA tournament. Interesting, you mentioned the two and a half kills because on the season, she's averaging less than that. You love to see players in their senior season take it up a notch in the tournament. And that's what we're seeing so far today from Cozy Burnett. How about the big block at the net? Kennedy Redding, the freshman who's emerged at the middle blocker position, along with Lindy Haddock. And there she is again. How many times have we already mentioned Liddy, Lindy Haddock, the one on the outside, a smaller setter at just five foot ten, doing a great job on the block. Well, Brooke Morgan coming back the other way, 15 and White, the junior out of Iowa, has been inserted as of late. She's gotten going strong. One of the things we hear consistently from Craig Skinner of Kentucky is that it's going to take the entire team to move forward in this tournament. And Brooke Morgan is such a great example of that. Over the course of conference play, we saw more of Darian Mack on the right side for Kentucky. But they've needed Brooke late 
in the season because of the matchups, and she's really come through. Another second contact kill from BYU, so they're establishing some setter offense here early in this match. Well, Haddock has set the bulk of the matches for the Cougars this season, although Heather Olmstead can also go to Alohi Robbins-Hardy as well, the senior on this group. We talked about Kentucky with that comeback win over Western Kentucky down two sets. And how about Avery Skinner with the solo stuff? Talking about being six deep at any time on the floor, no matter who those players are, that is what Kentucky has been about in this tournament. And Avery Skinner, as a freshman, playing some of her best volleyball. They don't have to rely on Avery Skinner, but when she comes out and has big performances, Kentucky's even better. Well, you talked about that was one of the keys for success for the Wildcats. 11-7, BYU has the advantage. 13th seed, lucky number 13, for it's the third year in a row that they've drawn that seed. And Mary Lake got a hand on it, saved it. Martindale, and there's Jones Perry to hit it over. Skinner coming at it again. Once again, Lake with a dig, and then cheering her team on. Lily, quick set, slide from Brown. And Duchette can't handle it from 12 and blue. How about Mary Lake? Two monstrous digs to keep the Cougars in this one. And then don't give Veronica Jones Perry to finish off a rally because good chances she's going to do it. Already the Cougars with the hot hand and Mary Lake, the energizer bunny for this group. Her Cougars enjoying a five point lead here in the first frame from Lexington. Northwestern Mutual. Northwestern Mutual. We help you live life differently and in part by Dr. Scholz. Welcome back to Lexington, Kentucky. BYU on top, 12-7 here in the first set, and the Cougars looking strong, hitting extremely efficiently, 462 compared to a 125 flip for the Wildcats. It's that efficiency that jumps off the page, but it's the eight digs from BYU that are allowing them to transition offensively compared to Kentucky's only three digs. Kaz Brown calling for a touch. Instead, it's called out. BYU gets the point. Another layout by Lindy Haddock, and the defense for BYU continues to impress. They said after second round that this is a team who's hanging their hat on their defense. There's Lacey Haddock, number 11 in blue. Skittle once again and meets the big block of BYU. It was Lindy Haddock early. Now it's her twin sister in blue, number 11, Lacey getting in on the blocking action. And when we say they're hanging their hat on their defense, we're talking about defense at the net and in the backcourt. 4-0 run for the Cougars. Skinner hits it in the sweet spot and ends the run, we'll see. Freshman Avery Skinner on a very fast attack from Madison Lilly, freshman setter, freshman of the year in this region. We mentioned that Leah Edmond was the freshman of the year a season ago for back-to-back -back years for the Kentucky Wildcats to have the region freshman of the year. Well, straight down the gut, Kennedy Redding out of Bountiful, Utah. Tiffany, the big question mark on this on this team coming into the season was the fact that they had to replace two middles. Would they be able to do that? And it took some nice coaching to make sure that happened. They have a red shirt freshman in Redding playing in the middle, and then a player who switched positions to fill that spot that they needed. Well, Jones Perry continuing to look strong, and another quick timeout taken. On the court, Craig Skinner doesn't like what he sees as BYU has doubled their lead. Jones Perry has the Cougars fans 
fired up. They're chilling right now, but don't worry. After every point, we hear them right behind us as they made the trip from Provo, Utah to cheer on their team. The distance of that trip has resulted in a pretty small contingency, but a loud one nonetheless. Edmund giving Wildcats fans something to cheer about. Coming out of the timeout, Edmund now with two kills. One of the best in the business. Pulling within four now is Kentucky. Nice dig there from Gaddy Curry. The DS out of Buford, Georgia. And Cougars, they answer. Cozy Burnett averaging 1.33 blocks per set. I just can't say how impressive that number is considering this is her first year in the middle. They are 11th in the entire nation as a team in blocks per set at just under three. Hits the antenna, that's ruled out, so BYU gets the point. And obviously we see that as an error from Leah Edmond, but credit the previous stuff block by Cozy Burnett for creating that error, that error because she's forcing Leah Edmond to take a swing that she's not as comfortable with. Franklin on the slide, number 11 in white, very effective off of one foot. And BYU is really going to challenge Kentucky to beat them with swings from the middle. You see Cozy Burnett cheating toward Leah Edmond. They're going to take her away first. That is their first defensive priority. And they're going to say, we're going to give that ball to Emily Franklin because they don't think that they can beat them from the right antenna, but they certainly know Kentucky can beat them from the left antenna. Well, one thing Heather Olmstead told us yesterday, she wanted to get her offense going. One way that they could neutralize Kentucky is holding them to a low hitting efficiency. So far, they've done that 0.69 thus far. And they've done it on the arm of Veronica Jones-Perry, who just happens to be fifth in the entire nation in kills per set. Right now, she's got five kills in the opening frame. On the outside, McKenna Miller. Here's Edmund, 13 white. And Franklin pushes it over. Well, BYU with a five point lead here. We talked about their 30 and two record on the season. Fourth straight West Coast Conference title. They took down ranked opponents in Utah, San Diego, their conference foe. And they actually shared that title with San Diego this year as those teams split. Energized by Emily Franklin once again. She and Brooke Morgan right there at the net. And that's the Kenna Miller, number 14 in blue for BYU, taking a big approach off the net. But Emily Franklin, beautiful timing on that block. BYU fans come in a small but impactful force and when you think about just the season that they've had the way they have rallied around this team earlier this season Lindy and Lacey Haddock lost their father unexpectedly just before the start of the year and certainly the way they've been able to kind of play for their father on the court has meant so much and the way they've responded on the other side though playing with heavy hearts for Kentucky because one of their teammates' father, Anna Nyberg, Nyberg's father, passed away with a bout of cancer. And Craig Skinner, an administrator, and a couple of players actually made a trip to Wisconsin on last night to go pay their respects. And it doesn't surprise me at all, having been around this program for a good bit this year, Tiffany, to see Craig Skinner leave after practice yesterday. This is a close-knit group. And as you said, you have to expect some heavy hearts today as they're without their team. And thinking about the emotions that you're playing with when you are thinking about my teammate isn't here, but Kylie Schmoltz, who we may not see on the court today, that's her roommate. I mean, there's a lot to deal with. And of course, there's a big match on the line here and a chance to go to the round of eight tomorrow. And for BYU, the Haddock Twins, all season long, being able to dedicate this season to their father and interestingly coached by Heather Olmstead, who's a twin herself. And this coaching staff told those young ladies, you take as much time as you need. But in about three days, they were back in the gym. And you know, there's something about the normalcy of the day-to-day -day life that helps us cope sometimes with tragedy. The Cougars looking to open strong here from Lexington. Oh, 
six, Haddock. Out to McKenna Miller, 14 in blue. Low-key savage is what they like to call her in Emily Franklin. They get her going, you gotta watch out. The weight training staff actually nicknamed her Low-key Savage, and it fits Emily Franklin to a T. Not the big personality necessarily, but wow, is she a presence on the court. Now she certainly goes after it already this afternoon. She's got three kills, and how about adding a service ace to it? Really important for Kentucky right here to keep the serve in play. They missed a serve just moments ago, and when Veronica Jones Perry is in the back row, Kentucky has to take advantage of these rotations to score points. There's Brooke Morgan taking a swing at it, unable to get to it is Tristan Mosier, and Brooke Morgan helps bring the Wildcats within two. A younger front line here for BYU. McKenna Miller, a sophomore, and that red shirt freshman, Redding, trying to defend Brooke Morgan, who at six foot five is a hard matchup for anyone. We saw a lot more of her last season. Darian Mack filled those shoes more so this year. Craig Skinner said there was nothing wrong with Brooke Morgan. It was just a matter of matchups as Miller, 14 blue, gets it over. And the free ball over from the Wildcats, an opportunity for the Cougars. The net violation called on Kentucky. But with Veronica Jones Perry in the back row, the Cougars are having a real hard time finishing swings. Kentucky's getting some really nice quality touches right now on those outside swings from McKenna Miller, and their defense is transitioning those quite easily. Oh. A misplay, and I'm not even sure how Leah Edmond even got to that to even perhaps get it over. It falls just short, but nice effort. A near miraculous play by Leah Edmond, but it was actually Ashley Duchette who even kept the ball alive there on second contact. And with that, we're gonna see a little breather for Leah Edmond across the back row as Meredith Jewell will come in for Kentucky to spell her, another defensive specialist for these Wildcats. Out of Louisville, Kentucky, number 19 in white. And there's Skinner, Avery Skinner. Go kid. This is a freshman who is rising to the occasion at just the right time. Over the course of the season, you felt like there were times where Kentucky tried not to overload her at the left antenna. Now it feels like they're trying to find her at the left antenna. That is how good she's been in NCAA play. And just as solid is Lacey Haddock, the nice off-speed shot to catch the Wildcats defense napping. And a big pump fist from Coach Heather Olmstead after this one. Coaches can so appreciate the players who find the shots, know how to find kills, know how to challenge the defense. Redding gets the touch from the Wildcats, Point Cougars. And this touch call is gonna come from the line judge on the BYU side of the court. Obviously lands out of bounds, but because of the touch call, that is a huge point for BYU. What an angle taken by Avery Skinner. She has just elevated her game. Four kills as she rotates out, but Missy, you mentioned she is an X factor. Absolutely no drop off for Kentucky right now when Leah Edmond rotates to the back row. I don't think the same is true right now for, BYU, for BYU when Veronica Jones Perry goes to the back row. We're seeing a drop off right now offensively and it's allowed Kentucky to get back in this first set. Well, this set belongs to the Cougars. No drop off there from Jones Perry. When they feed her, she gets it done, 25-20. BYU opens here on the home floor of the Wildcats in the regional semifinal. Set two, just on round the corner. BYU grabbing the first set 25-20, and they were able to do it behind six kills from Veronica Jones-Perry. Veronica Jones-Perry 
proving herself on a big stage. You know, and I think playing in the West Coast Conference, this is a team who can completely get overshadowed by the Pac-12. But what the Olmsteads and Sean and now Heather have created at BYU is a volleyball powerhouse, and we got a taste of that. The top four seeds hold true. They advance to host the regional finals. Five unseeded teams we mentioned at the top of the broadcast advancing. We'll see one here after this match in Colorado, tied for the most in the last 10 seasons. And then the Big Ten and Pac-12 had the most teams going in to uh, this NCAA tournament with a total of 11 remaining, nine of the last 10 championships from one of those two conferences. A great look there at the junior, Veronica Jones Perry. For the first time this season, a six rotation player, it's really hard to believe in how comfortable she looks across the backcourt. And they don't leave her back there just because she's an offensive threat. Coach Olmstead told us that as the season went on, they realized teams were starting to avoid her, that they weren't serving her. That's how well she has passed for this team. And of course, they have Mary Lake anchoring that passing core. She is the West Coast Conference Defender of the Year. Mackenzie Watson starts things off here in set number two. Nice effort for the dig, but unable to keep it in play as Dushek and BYU coming out with the first point. And again, it's a very purposeful choice of shots early in the set that we saw from BYU in set one and now in set two that they're using some off speed, some setter offense early in the set to open things up. Avery Skinner. Leah Edmond have teamed up. Skinner right here, picking up where she left off in the first set. We talked about how great the seniors are, but there's a look at the future of Kentucky Volleyball, and it looks pretty good. There's seven in white, Kaz Brown. One of the best blockers in UK history. She owns every blocking record in the books, including total blocks at over 560 in her career. Whoa. 12 blue again, Jones Perry going at it once more. Got him. And you notice the first swing down the line from Jones Perry, that was Mackenzie Watson, a defensive specialist of Kentucky, who plays that ball right back up. And on the second swing, Jones Perry makes an adjustment, hits deep into the corner. Edmund takes a little something out of nothing, making it happen. Here's a look at the high flyer, 13 and white, Leah Edmond. A great approach that time, completely in system because of some good passing out of the back court. And that makes all the difference for Kentucky. Dushek right there, right in the sweet spot, Jones Perry. You think about a player in Veronica Jones Perry, who goes from maybe a third ouch or fourth option for the Cougars in the previous years to perhaps an All-American candidate. And option number one just talks about the work that these players put in in the offseason to improve their play and how committed they are to the success of this team. Well, Emily Franklin voted All-SEC for the first time since donning a Kentucky uniform had a great stretch of volleyball for about 11 matches where she hit better than 400. Kenna Miller right into the Wildcats block. And Franklin helping to get things going for Big Blue Nation, 5-3. Well, Craig Skinner. Who is the co SEC coach of the year? They share the SEC championship with Florida, first time since 1988. The Wildcats have had a piece or owned the crown. And when you look at just the season that they put together, number one in the RPI, their only losses to ranked teams, the honors just kept flooding in for Kentucky. 
and they really put a great string of matches together. It's right there. McKenna Mello, 14 blue, was pumped up after that one. Last year, she was the West Coast Conference Freshman of the Year. And she's had to come out as a sophomore. I think as a freshman, you come into a conference, teams aren't familiar with you, they've never defended you before. And sometimes backing that up your sophomore year can be really difficult because now all of these defenses are geared around you. And she's really had to stay the course. And Coach Holmes said, said you know, she's just quietly going about her business and getting it done for us. Still a very solid season for her, better than three kills a set. Heather Olmstead has a group of hard workers, she told us, a group that just loves to learn and soak up information. <laughs> Lily sets Edmund for the back row. A little too strong there from 13 White. I had wondered there in set one, when the Cougars were needing some offense, if they would go to Jones Perry in the back row. We didn't see much of that. Kentucky gives it a try to Leah Edmund, and that one is just long. Her sister, Lacey. Maybe the Lacey and right back to Skinner. NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship coverage continues with the national semifinals Thursday, December 14th at 7 Eastern on ESPN. For more information on the NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship, visit NCAA.com, your home for all 90 NCAA championships. Skinner just using every shot. She's hyped after that one. Again, hitting it off the hands of BYU. Fifth year senior, middle blocker Emily Franklin. Huge dig on the angle shot that allows Kentucky to transition. And again, Avery Skinner, what a match. You know, we talked to Coach Skinner, no relation there between them, earlier in the season about the fact that it's a huge step from high school to college and how long this season is and how do you prepare the freshmen for that. And he said it's something you have to be aware of on day one. You can't overtrain in August or they could be broken down by December. And you can see that Kentucky has managed their freshmen so well when you see at the level that Avery Skinner is playing right now in December. She doesn't look broken down at all. She looks like she's getting better. Call her name, Avery Skinner. Now with eight kills, hitting better than 350. Madison Lilly, the freshman setter, number three in white, delivers a perfect ball. She has Avery Skinner in rhythm. The connection right now between those two freshmen is on point. Short serve from Watson, pushed out to Perry. Jones Perry, 12 blue continues to be the hot hand for the Cougars. How about the range from Jones Perry? The sharp angle that time. I mean, just beautiful. She refuses to hit it into the lap of Ashley Duchette, because if you do, that's a ball that Kentucky will transition. Reading for it is Cozy Burnett. There's Duchette, bump serve out of system. Errant hit from Skinner. We'll give her that one. <laughs> A little chuckle from the freshman. She has been so perfect. BYU ties it up at nine all. Lacey Haddock, the junior outside, and the older twin by four minutes. Puts BYU on top. Lacey had an injury early in the season, so she has been in and out of the lineup. But solid from the left side right now. And beautiful pancake dig, the hand, the extension from her sister, Lindy, just not able to keep the rally going, but great effort from Lindy had it. And you see the frustration from Coach Olmstead as she says, hey guys, we made the hard play. You made the pancake. Now someone just keep that ball alive. Just keep 
those hands hot, and good things can happen for you. Mackenzie Watson says, I don't know how it happened. Kaz Brown got in on the action. Hedman was able to get it over. And Mackenzie Watson with a smile on her face, but I'll tell you how it happened. Watson in the right place at the right time. When you are where you're supposed to be consistently, good things happen, and that's the type of defender that Mackenzie Watson is. Haddock setting up Jones Perry just too strong. One of the rare misses for Veronica Jones Perry. And I would say perhaps one of the rare misses for Haddock as a setter, and that that one was just a little too low. And this coming from the eyes of a former setter. Again, right there, BYU is able to play up balls and keep them going. And 13 white, Leah Edmond able to end the rally. And three white, Madison Lilly, a spinning set from right back in rhythm, on tempo, delivered right in the proper place. Rosie Burnett in the middle. Kaz Brown was calling for it. The decision to go to Lilly, to Edmund. Again, it works. A really big time swing from Cozy Burnett and an even bigger time dig from Ashley Dushek there and left back. She doesn't just keep it alive. She puts a perfect ball up at the net. Answering right back is Lacey Haddock, 11 blue. And this is a player who, as a sophomore last year, averaged better than two kills. But again, Missy, you mentioned having missed those 14 matches this season. Have skewed her numbers just a little bit on the slide. Kaz Brown, yes. Immediate timeout on the court, and Kentucky coming back here in set two. They've got a four-point advantage. 24 Oregon and took down American in that first round, and they're among those teams have not dropped a set thus far. We'll see three of them here in this Lexington Regional. And one of them is the unseeded Colorado team has not dropped a set yet in the tournament. Of course, in this match here, we have BYU and Kentucky who are both on a nine match win streak this season. That is in jeopardy here this afternoon as Heather Olmstead and this BYU team. Looking to make it to the regional final. They made it to six straight regionals. Kept alive, and Lily just a little tough set there for Edmund. And point BYU. But Leah Edmund doing some really nice things at the net, using her athleticism defensively. We've seen her come down from a block and turn and play an off speed. You know, BYU had some success with off speed early in this match. And it's asking a lot of the back row defense of Kentucky to dig balls and release for that tip. And Leah Edmund really helping her defenders out. Emily Franklin got the slide working for 11 white now has six kills. Again, BYU going with the odds there and choosing to defend Leah Edmond, giving Emily Franklin that one on one look, and Emily Franklin completely capitalizing. The big tur turnaround for Kentucky thus far. As we see Danelle Stetler, first action from her registering the kill. Number 13 in blue there, Stetler, has been a big part of this BYU team over the course of the season. We mentioned that Lacey Haddock had an injury. We've seen a lot of Stetler on the outside. So just another look for this BYU team. Stetler going forward again, the lefty who hits right. Now with two kills here this afternoon, she had five in the previous two matches. And right now she's on the court 
opposite Veronica Jones Perry. We said that when Jones Perry went to the back row, they were having trouble scoring points. That's when McKenna Miller was at the left antenna. So they're using Stutler in McKenna Miller's position across the front row. Boy, that was a dart that came off the hands of Brooke Morgan. And if you're going to play Kentucky, you've got to be prepared to defend both Brooke Morgan and Darian Mack. Two completely respected attackers and yet very different. The difference between sets one and sets two for Kentucky thus far, the hitting percentage. 175 and set one, 407 here in the second frame as you take a look at what's coming up later today here on ESPNU. Missouri unseated, taking on the top seed. Penn State at 2 Eastern, then Florida and UCLA tussle at 4. And then the late, late night cap is Wisconsin and Stanford. And a lot of eyes will be on that one. A rematch of last year as Stanford kind of played upset. The sixth seed last year, Wisconsin was the three seed. But it was Stanford who went on and eventually won the national championship. Wisconsin would like to turn the tables this year as they're on the road. I'll tell you, all coaches coming back to this match are going to tell you, be ready when your number is called. And we are seeing such a great example of that in Brooke Morgan for Kentucky and Danelle Stetler for BYU. Their numbers have been called today, and both have come out and performed. And how about a fifth-year senior in Emily Franklin who just steps back to the service line and drops in an ace? Her second of the match, she's put together some solid numbers thus far to go along with three digs, two blocks, and six kills. Morgan going right at it once more. BYU thought they could keep playing it, but the up official, Michelle Painter, said the ball hit the floor, and Kentucky with the point. Kentucky with Morgan across the front row. Meredith Jewell across the back row making a couple subs that have not necessarily been consistent throughout the season for them, but certainly working well right now. Well, a timeout is taken on the court. Heather Olmstead wants to talk it over with her Cougars. They're down by five. The four-seeded Kentucky Wildcats on top here in set number two over 13 seed BYU, 20 to 15. Just before the break, there was a challenge on the floor, and BYU challenged whether the ball actually hit the floor or not. After review, the officials say, yes, it did hit the floor, and the point stands and goes to Kentucky. Well, Saturday, we'll have a trifecta of events for you on ESPN at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 Pacific. It's MLS Cup between Toronto FC and the Seattle Sounders. Then at eight, the Heisman Trophy presentation. And at nine, we'll see top ranked boxing. The WBO Junior lightweight title is on the line. Everything on ESPN and the ESPN app. Good conversation coming out of the Heisman Trophy. Who are you putting your money on? You got Bryce Love out of Stanford and Baker Mayfield from Oklahoma, the reigning Heisman Trophy winner, and Lamar Jackson from Louisville. Who's your pick? I don't know. I think I'm going to show a little love for love. I kind of like him. What do you think? I like love, too. I like love, too. We should spread love. Love. We talked about the turnaround for Kentucky and their hitting efficiency, third in the country. And looking strong and raising that average for BYU is Lacey Haddock as she tries to fire up her teammates. With that, Danelle Stetler, who made a tremendous trip across the front row for BYU, will now exit the match. And that means Veronica Jones Perry back to the front row. The Wildcats defense will have to be on high alert as they'll be looking for 12 in blue. So BYU coming off with two straight points out of the break. Really smart tip by BYU forcing Brooke Morgan there in right front to release all the way across the court at six foot five and try to make a play on that tip shot. Skinner with the hammer. And this is a player we've watched a lot over the course of the season, Tiffany, and she is executing 
at a whole new level. The pace on her swing, she is bringing a thunderous attack here. Jones Perry with the free ball over. Skinner wants it again. This is a game at this level when you're trying to receive serve from some of the best in the country that is so skewed to the left antenna. And right now that is working in Kentucky's favor. Two excellent pin hitters for Kentucky. When we talk about Avery Skinner, the freshman out of Katy, Texas, and you said it at the beginning of the broadcast, Missy, I want to go back to the point that Avery Skinner was going to be an X factor for Kentucky. You see her numbers on the afternoon already in double figures and kills, a very good hit percentage as well. What's wowed you most about her? You know, she averages just over three kills per set. As you mentioned, already has 11 here today. She's playing with such poise that she has got a heavy arm, but she, and she's seeing the court so well as a freshman. I think the way that she's seeing the court, getting her arm through quick, and the connection that she has with Madison Lilly. These are both freshmen on this Kentucky team, part of the number five recruiting class in the nation. This is a team who has really, or excuse me, a class that has contributed so much to the success of this Kentucky team, and they have really grown up over the course of this season. Well, coming up at the intermission, We'll break down the Colorado-Nebraska match, which is happening on the court following this game. Plus, we'll have stats and highlights as well. And as we kind of tease what's interesting about Colorado and Nebraska, the Buffaloes trying to make it to the round of eight for the first time ever in school history. Meanwhile, Nebraska, they've been mainstays in the tournament when you're talking about getting deeper and deeper. Four national championships to their credit. The last one coming in 2015 where they actually had to come through Lexington to get the hardware. And of course, those are two former conference rivals who will meet for the first time since realignment. Well, we saw the energy, excitement, and vibrancy from BYU in set one, taking down Kentucky 25-20. Here the Wildcats trying to claim a set of their own. And inserted into the game is Sarah Hampson, 22 and blue. Joust at the net, Kennedy Redding doesn't win that set point. Kentucky. And the Wildcats are feeling it. Freshman setter getting the best of that joust. That was a 5-11 Madison Lilly against a 6-4 Kennedy Redding. And that bounces off the Cougars. And the Wildcats bounce back in set number two. Oh, a good one is brewing here from Lexington in the regional semifinal. Four seed in Kentucky evens the score for the Huskers. And they will be led by a young lady who was one of the most outstanding players from the 2015 tournament in Michaela Beckman. Lots of new faces on the Nebraska team this year that, that you will meet, but one that you're sure to recognize is their junior outside hitter, Michaela Fecky. She is the top attacker for the Corn Huskers with just under three and a half kills per set. For the first time this season, she's playing in all six rotations and doing it quite well. She was a unanimous all Big Ten selection. Got a strong start here in the first two rounds of the NCAA tournament, taking a look at two All-Americans there for the Huskers and Kelly Hunter, the Big Ten setter of the year as well. A lot of confidence returned to this team with the return of Kelly Hunter. She was out early in the season when they suffered a couple losses, but she certainly has been on track. Folks, you want to come back with us. Third frame on the way between BYU and Kentucky.
the NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship presented by Northwestern Mutual. Well, just as we expected, BYU and Kentucky putting on a show here this afternoon from Memorial Coliseum. We're tied at one apiece as we're just about ready to start with set number three, Tiffany Green with Missy Whittemore. And in that first set, we saw BYU come out and they just looked unstoppable. What changed from set one to set two? I think it was Kentucky's ability to take away offense from BYU out of the middle. BYU has six total kills out of the middle in this match, but could only get one kill out of the middle in set two. So BYU really shut them down, or excuse me, Kentucky really shut them down there in the middle, and that hurt BYU. They weren't able to spread the ball around. Now BYU hit for 211 in that second set. Meanwhile, Kentucky was able to get it going at 444, holding them to a lower clip is what Heather Olmstead said was important to kind of minimizing the effect that the Wildcats could have. But Veronica Jones Perry in a Cougar uniform means trouble for most teams. She's already in double digits here today. She has 10 kills, but only on a 217 clip. Not bad, but below the average of what they're used to getting from Veronica Jones Perry. And of course, with the fact that Kentucky has taken away that middle offense, there's a whole lot of pressure on the arm of Veronica Jones Perry right now. And then, of course, the X factor of this match. We said coming in, Avery Skinner could be the difference maker. This is not a player that Kentucky has had to lean on all year, but the better she is, the better Kentucky is as a team. She already has 11 kills here today on a three. 48 hitting efficiency. When you're a team who has two outside hitters playing well, you have the ability to advance far in this tournament. And when you see the numbers, we said they were going to be evenly matched and through the first two sets, it appears to be that way. Little nudge to Kentucky when it comes to hit percentage, but PYU is right there with them. And the difference in those numbers all happened in set two, of course, where Kentucky's offense really started to fire. A reminder of our bracket here, First, we'll see BYU Kentucky in play now, and then after that, the number five seed, Nebraska, taking on Colorado, and that will be just about two o'clock Eastern. You can catch that on ESPN3. Everybody is obviously trying to make it to Kansas City. Teams are trying to punch their ticket. The regional final will be tomorrow. Later here this afternoon, we'll see Missouri and the top-seeded Penn State and the Lions at 2 Eastern. Then Florida will host UCLA at 4. And Wisconsin taking on the defending national champion, Stanford, out at Naples Pavilion at 11 p.m. Eastern. You can see all of that right here on ESPNU. Also streaming live on the ESPN app. Straight out the gate. The point goes to BYU here in set number three. Kaz Brown, they're starting to find a rhythm against Veronica Jones Perry defensively, but that one off the blocker's hands out of, pound, out of bounds, and that first point will go to the Cougars. Lily over to Skinner. Skinner with a masterful use of her shot there. Everyone was expecting her to go for it. This time, she just tips it over. And this is storybook material for a freshman to come out on the national stage in the NCAA tournament and put up the numbers that we're seeing from Avery Skinner. First time the Wildcats have made it to the round of 16 since 2012. They posted two years in between that time, but were not a part of either of those tournaments. So Craig Skinner is certainly Glad to be back. They've made 13 straight NCAA appearances. And you think that's not a little fuel for your fire to sit here in your gym and watch four other teams play in the round of 16? That's hard to do. <laughs> Veronica Jones Perry, not to be outdone from the left side. What does she do in response to the performance we're seeing from Avery Skinner? She raises it to another level. Martindale gets her hands on it. Paddock to Jones Perry, the block from Kentucky. Once again, out to the left pin, 12 in blue. And how about 12 in white with a nice save? Leah Edmund can Gabby, be unstoppable. Gabby Curry, you mentioned 12 in white. The diving save to the corner. This is so difficult as a middle back player. You are literally asked to roam from corner to corner. It's that dig that allows Aaliyah Edmund the swing to finish the point. Come on, 
Just played wrong off the hands, came off the platform wrong, and Ashley Dushek ties it up with the service ace. Ashley Dushek, only nine aces on the season, has had two here today. So that's a senior knowing when her point, when her team needs points, needs balls to create out of system opportunities. And she is doing a nice job in the service line. Burnett out of the middle. You mentioned it during the intermission, Missy, the importance of trying to get offensive production from that middle hitter position. Yeah, that's a key kill for BYU, not just in the fact that it ties this third set at four, but they've got to get something going in the middle. Lily to Franklin off the slide. Well, Emily Franklin racked up her first All-SEC honors this season. Madison Lilly as well was just absolutely terrific. And you look at the All-Southwest Region Awards as well. Five in total when you see the highlighted Edmund and Lilly, player and freshman of the year respectively. And you know you're doing something right recruiting-wise when back-to-back -back years you have the Region Freshman of the Year and calling up the former Region Freshman of the Year, Leah Edmond. There she is once again. Another nice defensive play, but what I'm so impressed with on this play here is that Leah Edmond converts that off of a bump set from Ashley Dushek, but don't under underestimate Ashley Dushek's ability to control her bump set. Jones Perry trying to control the tempo, put it back in favor of BYU, now down by one as she goes behind the service line. And we actually saw this BYU team practice overpass kills yesterday in practice. It's not something they take for granted. They expect those overpass balls to be put away. And Morgan just misses that one there. We've seen Emily Franklin on the slide. They continue to give that to Emily Franklin. Emily Franklin continues to take it. Now with Brooke Morgan in the front row, Emily Franklin stays in front, and they try Morgan on the slide. They go to that play once again, this time Morgan able to convert. And Kentucky is going to stick with it, whether it is Brown, Franklin or Morgan, they have three players who can convert the slide. And look at that. Every time they go to it, one blocker. They are challenging BYU to defend that play. How about that one? Dropping in Leah Edmond, the Lexington, Kentucky native with the service ace. The two offensive arms on, this on these teams, Leah Edmond and Veronica Jones-Perry, both lead their team in aces as well. Jones Perry more of a jump serve, whereas Leah Edmond has the deadly and lethal top spin. You know, Stetler gets the kill, but I'm going to give the point to Mary Lake once again because any time that the team needs to be reignited and infused with energy, Mary Lake is right there in the faces of her teammates getting them going. Two different people said to me yesterday, I've never seen Mary Lake have a bad day. Two different people. People close to the program who see her <laughs> on a daily basis. And by the way, that was another kill by Avery Skinner, if you're wondering. 13, if you're keeping record at home, she's not having a bad day herself. The freshman for the Wildcats, Stetler from the left pin. And we've seen Stetler be inserted into this match and really give the Cougars a nice boost. I think both of these teams are a great example of the depth of your bench and how important it is. And both of these coaches have not been afraid to go to their bench. So many talented players on both of these rosters. Edmund just short on that attempt. It's tied at nine all. Paddock feeding Redding once again. Avery 
Skinner is having an all-around great afternoon. And you see here, they go to the middle twice in a row. And Heather Olmstead, after that second swing, calling to her setter, Lindy Haddock, she wanted to see a different set there on the second attempt. The blockers didn't have to move. They were already lined up right in front of Redding. Second set, maybe out to the antenna, could have created a hole in the block. And right answering back at the net are Redding and Stetler. When you think about this Cougars team, and you mentioned it earlier, Missy, the fact that they graduated, they're all Americans, it seems like it's been every year. You had Jennifer Hampson and Alexa Gray. Last year was Amy Boswell. And for both Boswell and Hampson, they played the middle blocker position. They've had to replace and insert new faces in there. And again, Redding has come along. Burnett as well, we've seen. Has had a solid season as well. How about Redding hitting it over? Kaz Brown going right at Mary Lake. And the Wildcats get the point, but wonderful defense on both sides. And how about Mackenzie Watson? She has that initial play to keep things going. And Redding, maybe the biggest player on the court up there at six foot four in this particular juncture in the game is the one makes the diving play over the net running to the net to get in place defensively and the offense of Kentucky is just too fast. We said we would see superb defense as both of these teams are so evenly matched. BYU has been hanging their hats on defense all season long and that's been a staple for Kentucky as well. Another pickup on the tip by Leah Edmond, though, as she's coming down on the block, continues to help her backcourt defense pick up those tip shots. Slamming it down is seven and white, Kaz Brown. Kaz Brown with the dunk shot. Early in the match, a couple tips from Kaz Brown, a little too much loft on those, and BYU's defense easily comes in and plays that up. That time, Kaz Brown puts a little extra power on it, and Coach Olmstead isn't so sure. A misfire from Jones Perry. Saving that one after the big Kentucky block. A net violation called on the Cougars. And Kaz Brown, shout out to the senior. 1,000 career kills racked up on the previous point for Kentucky. Fifth middle blocker to reach that plateau. What a save by Duche. Going at it again is had it this time. It touches the floor. Sister to sister. Beautiful play. Hanging it up behind the block. Cannot close. That is a good setting choice right there. And I love the determination in Lacey's eyes as she's there on the serve. She wanted to go at it again and did so. Nice dig there from her, 11 in blue. Even better kill from Leah Edmond. Somebody's having some fun. 11 kills now for Leah Edmond. And is a champion for volleyball, plus some heavy hitters and sizzling matchups in the road to Kansas City, the site of the national championship, plus scores, highlights, analysis, and more. You can find it on ESPNW.com. Well, speaking of Mary Wise, her team in action later today here on ESPNU at 4 o'clock against UCLA. Also another Pac-12 team in Gainesville, USC and Minnesota. And then Texas, Utah. Boy, if Texas could advance and perhaps Stanford advance, we could see a rematch of the national championship from a season ago. What's also unique 
about each of these brackets, Missy, is the fact that Mary Wise, of course, a trailblazer in her own right, winning is one of the winningest coaches in Division I history. She is one of four women spread out across the four brackets coaching in the NCAA tournament this season. And of course, here in Lexington, we have Heather Olmstead of BYU, Kathy George of Michigan State still in the tournament, and Beth Lanier of Utah in her 28th season. Mary Wise in her 27th at Florida. Beth Lanier at Utah in her 28th. And just last weekend, Utah and Beth Lanier hosted a first and second round. Heather Olmstead and BYU hosted a first and second round just 45 minutes apart. And Coach Olmstead said, what a, what a great weekend for volleyball in our state for the fans to be able to see volleyball played at such a high, high level. And of course, Olmstead was an assistant for Lanier at Utah. Out of the timeout, Kentucky gets the point 16-13 Wildcats. We mentioned that three of four teams in this particular regional had not lost a set coming into regional play. Kentucky, the highest seed, the only team who had lost a set, and not only did they lose a set, they were down 0-2 here on their home court to Western Kentucky. So they have sort of faced the, the brink there and stared it down and they were able to overcome in five sets. And after that point, it gets the Wildcat fans riled up. A strong showing out of the breaks. 13 seed BYU took set number one here at Memorial Coliseum before Kentucky evened it up. And Missy, you talked to Heather Olmstead yesterday about the first thing that she looks at when getting a box score. What did you find interesting in her response? You know, I think for so many coaches, they'll tell you that actually the numbers they're concerned about are the numbers you don't even see in the box score. They keep so many numbers on the bench about the quality of their passing and the quality touches they get at the net. But one of the big numbers that is overlooked that's important to Coach Olmstead and so many coaches is their side out percentage. And for Coach Olmstead and BYU, they won that first set, siding out at 64%. It drops off to 47 in the second set. They're at 56%. Here in this third set, which isn't bad, but you compare that to 71% for Kentucky. They're starting out at 71% here in this third set, which means BYU having a lot of trouble scoring points off their own serve. Well, there they run off a point. Cozy Burnett goes back to serve. We mentioned to you earlier, first season playing at the middle blocker position the last four years. She was opposite or at the right side in position. Nice dig there from Tristan Mosier, 17 blue. And the set for Ashley Dushek out of system, doesn't matter. Avery Skinner kills it all the same. You think maybe you've created an out of system opportunity for your team by forcing Madison Lilly to make first contact, but look at the libero, Ashley Dushek stepping in a back set with her hands and she hangs it up there. Look, Avery Skinner immediately goes to Dushek and says, thanks for that. We've seen Haddock trying to use the second contact there. The block for 24, Kennedy Redding is good. It hasn't come often in terms of a block against Avery Skinner. And so you see the big celebration from BYU and they finally get a piece of the freshman. 17 blocks for BYU, one more for Kentucky. And on first contact is Mary Jewell. In set, in system rather, from Lily to Kaz Brown. We told you earlier that she already hit the 1,000 career kills mark and she's adding to it. And what we've seen from this Kentucky offense is that it's blossomed over the course of the match. They've become more diverse, hitting balls all along the net in different zones. We've seen Kaz Brown on a wide slide. We've seen her on a front slide. Now we see her on a tight slide behind. Their offense continues to develop. They give BYU a lot to think about defensively. And BYU coming back with the point, and they are staying right there with Kentucky. Neither team, or rather the Wildcats, not really able to stretch that lead as BYU is playing some stingy defense. 
And Martindale with a nice pump fist. The service ace brings them within one. So Kentucky takes a timeout as they were down one set before evening it, evening it up at one all, which is where we find ourselves. And you think back to last Saturday and they took on Western Kentucky and really the Hilltoppers dominated the first two sets behind Alyssa Cavanaugh. I mean, she was just on another level that night. She had 23 kills in total for WKU. Finally, the momentum started to shift and change, and Kentucky's Leah Edmond helped them lead the charge. You know, I can't, as I watch this, I can't help but think of the Stanford-Wisconsin match a year ago when Stanford was in Wisconsin and was down. 0-2 and had to battle back in five sets to win that. If anyone that tells you that a road to a championship is always pretty, that's not the case. There's times that you just have to battle, and that's what you're seeing from the Wildcats right here, digging deep and battling. When you see just three straight sets after down, 0-2 Edmund had a team high 22 kills. Madison Lilly quarterbacking that offense so well, and here's what Craig Skinner had to say after the win. Uh, so I can't even list all the individual plays in, in the beginning of the fifth set and before that, Brooke and Meredith coming and making a difference. We talked in August about 17 of us being strong all the way through. That for sure came through in this match tonight. Hell of a job, guys. And he shared with us that that was the best and toughest Kentucky team, best performance and one of the toughest performance that he'd ever seen a Kentucky team put on display. I tell you, after Meredith Jewell having an errant pass prior to that timeout, she steps back out there and nails one. And again, Kentucky behind the setter has been nearly unstoppable. Tiffany, it's interesting. We knew this was going to be close. The numbers coming out of that timeout prior to the Kaz Brown kill, both of these teams hitting exactly 276 here in this third set. And Haddock, Lacey Haddock, 11 blue answering. She went right at the block unafraid. This team, you look at them, they're a little bit undersized. They're not as physically intimidating perhaps as Kentucky across the board, and yet I think they're such a reflection of the fierce competitiveness we see in their coach, Heather Olmstead. A smaller player herself, she was a defensive player at Utah State, and we've seen this BYU team hang their hat on defense. Such a reflection of their coach. Big dig there from Dusheg, five in the black jersey. Lindy Haddock setting up Cozy Burnett. The middle, yes. Feed the middle and good things can happen for the Cougars. BYU starting to find some points in the middle, but it was actually the tip from Lacey Haddock that created a free ball situation. So while she didn't score on that tip, it still set the Cougars up nicely. Burnett. Back-to-back -back points, taking advantage of the overpass, and we're tied at 21. We've talked about Mary Lake being such a strong personality and energizer on this team, but Cozy Burnett enjoyed watching her in practice yesterday as she would look at her teammates and say, body language right here. And I like the body language we're getting from Cozy Burnett here in set three. And did you see the exclamation point from Lacey Haddock? Jumping up in the air after that service ace, and BYU now taking the lead. Lacey had a very intentional, intentional, excuse me, about this jump float serve. The BYU players all serve in a very similar fashion, but they're pretty fierce from the service line. Well, BYU, who's Number seven in the ABCA poll, 72 straight weeks, and they're making their 30th NCAA tournament appearances. Six seasons in a row, they've gotten to the regional semifinal. And before dropping that last set to Kentucky, they were perfect 
in their first two rounds against American and took down an Oregon team out of the Pac-12. And now they find themselves with a lead, first lead since it was 3-2 earlier in this set. And a name we haven't called a lot, Veronica Jones-Perry, but picking up the slack for her are a couple of other young ladies. The good news for BYU as you look at this third set stats is that Cozy Burnett has four kills here in this third set alone after their middles combined for only one kill in set two. Well, NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship coverage continues with the national semifinals Thursday, December 14th at 7 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. For more information on the NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship, visit NCAA.com. You're home for all 90 NCAA championships. What a swing by Leah Edmonds, but I really enjoy watching the reaction of Heather Olmstead because it looks like such an impressive swing, and yet she has high standards for this defense because her reaction is kind of like, how did we let that score? They expect to dig every ball, and that is the attitude you have to play with to advance in this tournament. You better expect to dig the hard balls. We said we hadn't called her name very much in this set. Veronica Jones Perry gives the lead right back to BYU. Prepares to serve. And that one is out. Kentucky is going to pull out that challenge card. Craig Skinner says, I want to challenge that one. Each coach gets three challenges. We saw Heather Olmstead already use one of her challenges here. Craig Skinner is exercising his right. This does not have any effect on timeouts, but what you can challenge are the following. Whether the ball is in or out, whether it touches a player, a net fault, or a service fault. And here, Craig Skinner is checking to see if there is a net violation. And we'll bring you a good look as the officials take a peek at it over at the scorer's table. And I tell you, these plays are happening so fast in real time. It's nearly impossible for us to see. I initially thought yep. they would challenge whether the ball was in or out, but actually they're challenging a net touch here. And then Cozy Burnett's hand, I think her right hand, touches the net. On her way down. That is unfortunate for BYU because it doesn't affect the play. It's just her turning quickly from the net. Now, I realize if it would have been her ponytail as she turns, that would not count as a net violation. But if they see her hand in the net there as she's turning to exit the net, this is a huge point in the match is that would have given BYU and it does give as the call stands it does give BYU set point with the opportunity to go up two sets to one wow here in this match wow I thought her hand was clear in the net BYU serving for set point here in the third frame. And a net violation called on Kentucky to give BYU the victory here in the third set. They go up two sets to one. Well, after being down 3-2 to start, it's BYU comes back late and takes third set. It's 2-1 Cougars. Well, that was an interesting third set as the way it ended. And all throughout the broadcast, BYU with 17 blocks and just over 300 for the Cougars. Now, Missy, I want you to go back and explain for us because we saw what we thought was a net violation. You got some 
better clarification from one of the officials what has to be called at one point uh, in order to see whether it's a net violation or, or whatever. So the challenge was definitely whether or not there was a net violation. And I said, would they have to, uh, would, K would Craig Skinner have to clarify if he's challenging a net violation on the block or would he have to clarify if it's the blocker moving away from the net? And I was told that if he is looking for a net violation, they will look at that specific time and location, which would include the entire blocking process. So whether she touched it above the net or on her way away would be included in that challenge. And they felt like from the angles they had that they thought perhaps it was the braid of the BYU player or the hair of the BYU player that made contact with the net. Thank you for that clarification as we may have seen it a little differently. We have to go back to five black Ashley Dushek that really helped to save that point for Kentucky. The pancake dig and then closed out by Kaz Brown. Ashley Dushek, the three-time SEC libero of the year out of East Bernard, Texas. Bump set from Lilly, hit over by Edmund. There's the to Redding. Again, slamming it down is seven white, Kaz Brown. And down one, two at this point in the match, the start to this set, all important for Kentucky. Create momentum early. Opportunity for Cougars to run their offense. Right into Leah Edmonds, crawl hit over by Avery Skinner, dug out by Mary Lake, 18 white. How about McKenzie Watson with the one-handed save? They're digging balls everywhere. This rally keeps going. Wonderful effort on both sides. And the crowd stands to their feet to applaud a wonderful display of athleticism and heart. And how about Mackenzie Watson in right back? In years past, that's not necessarily been your strongest defensive position, and yet the game has elevated to a level that you've got to have defenders all across the backcourt, and Mackenzie Watson is pretty special in right back. That's two and wide, and you think back to Assumption High School, also known as the Barrow U, as Jones Perry knocks that one down. Nice swing here by Jones Perry, but let me tell you something. This Kentucky defense is making her work for her points. There's Lake again. We're seeing wonderful defense, and Mary Lake is pumped up. And one of the few times today that BYU has defended the slide from Kentucky. They really were giving the slide early in this match, forcing Kentucky to set that right antenna. And whether it was Emily Franklin, Kaz Brown, Brooke Morgan, they were converting over there. That one sails just outside the boundary line off the hand of Haddock. Well, Craig Skinner is seeing some grit and determination like he saw against Western K Kentucky. And one of the things that he said after that match, it was a group who just didn't flinch. You know, they believed in themselves. They felt like they could do it. And how important is a win like that in a tournament where you're going to be tested? It's, it's going to be hard. You are, you're going to have, your back is going to be to the wall. And I feel like this Kentucky team had to face that early. They had the luxury of facing it on their home court with their fans behind them. But there's no more scare factor in this tournament for Kentucky. They face the fear of being eliminated. That's no longer something they have to uh, overcome. They understand it. They battled it. They came out victorious. And I think it makes them better in this regional to face that early. Nice dig there from Dushek. Edmund goes for it. And coming out strong here 
in the fourth set. You said the start was so important, Missy. Madison Lilly creates tempo. This is a high ball. It's dug high off the defender's hands, but Madison Lilly speeds up the offense. A point for Kentucky. So the Wildcats looking to roar back and even it up at two all. Well, folks, as a reminder, tonight on ESPN, Scott Van Pelt hosts the Midnight Eastern Sports Center following Celtic Spurs. He'll examine how the Cavs turn their slow start around. Plus, how Kevin Durant is taking charge of the Warriors and Steph Curry's absence. And the Army head coach, Jeff Monken, joins the show. Sports Center with SVP on ESPN and the ESPN app. The slide, you said, has worked for Kaz Brown and for Emily Franklin. They are two of five seniors who were in search of their 100th career win if they can take down BYU here this afternoon. Number 99 certainly came in pretty dramatic fashion. It's one that I think they will long remember. Interestingly, Kentucky and Western Kentucky volleyball alive and well in this state, both very successful programs. They played each other in the preseason as an exhibition, and they meet late in the season. The stakes much higher the second time, and wow, what a match. What a display of volleyball for the state of Kentucky. You mentioned Wildcats on a nine match win streak, equally the same for BYU. Both teams coming in hot, looking strong. And the winner of this one will advance to play either Colorado or Nebraska, which will be decided later this this match has been played at such a high level on both sides of the net. This is the first time in a set where a team, BYU, hitting in the negative numbers. And it's the Kentucky defense that's created that. That ends a 4 nothing run for the Wildcats. And perhaps here come the Cougars. They spent 72 weeks in the ABCA poll. Currently ranked seventh, right behind Kentucky. Jones Perry just got off the hands of Dushek. Down by three. And you talk about the range of Veronica Jones Perry. She has developed her game after so many sharp angle swings, forcing Dushek to have to dig that angle. Then she goes deep in the corner. The overpass, and Cozy Burnett says, uh huh, uh huh. Little shoulder action. Again, something you mentioned, Missy, we saw in practice yesterday. That is something that they have worked on. to come right back, standing tall at the net. Remember, BYU is 11th in the nation in blocks per set, and BYU is answering with a 4 nothing run. And Cozy Burnett able to close that block, but I believe it's the setter at 5'10", Lindy Haddock, who gets all of that one. <laughs> Ashley Dushek, the two-time all-American. She missed part of the season with a knee injury. Interestingly enough, she's a player that you have to game plan around. Oh my, Lord in the boom is Veronica Jones Barry. And Tristan Moser, just into the match. Tristan Moser, perfect pass. Look at that, right into the hands of her setter. Things are easy when you got passers delivering the ball like that. Veronica Jones, Perry, a recipient of a really nice pass from Moser. Lily to Franklin. 
right there is Jones Perry, 12 blue, hitting it over. Is Stetler 13 in blue? And the slide, and Stetler gets her hand on it. Going up again. Out to Edwin. It was sharp off the hand of Emily Franklin. BYU sticking to their game plan. They know how good the pin hitters are for Kentucky. They continue to allow their middles to cheat with the left side. It's going to create one block opportunities behind for Kentucky. And they're just challenging them to see if they can continue to execute those. Emily Franklin is at the net once again, making a play for the Wildcats. And Lily just watches that one go out. Well, we've seen some big plays for Emily Franklin. You go back to 2013. Remember, she's a fifth year senior and she goes back and, and watches on Here as Kentucky overall back in 2015, you remember, BYU was here. And the Cougars were playing on the court. The Wildcats weren't. It was a similar story back in 2013 as well. Predetermined sides you see there. Her team was eliminated. She looked on. And you think she's been waiting for this moment as Nathan Swarkey tweeted that out. It's what amazing a, that he still had that picture. What a great keep by one of their associate ADs to take that photo and hold on to it for that long. You know, he said, I doubt she knows this picture even exists. And yet that picture is worth a thousand words for a player who has grinded it out over a long five-year career and seen the Kentucky Wildcats make a huge turnaround. And that last ball over actually bounced off of Leah Edmonds' face. Ouch, that certainly doesn't feel good. I'm sure she shakes it off and keeps going. Brooke Morgan keeping the Wildcats going. And if you wonder how high above the net Leah Edmonds is playing, well, that shows you when she's up there blocking and you have to worry about balls off your head. That's how high above the net this game is played. Putting her hands up, keeping it going. And Lily Morgan got it. Different player, same set, same result. Kentucky executing the slot again and again and again. This time it's Brooke Morgan as Emily Franklin holds that middle block in front. Brooke Morgan one on one with Danelle Stetler. That's going to be good news for Kentucky every time. Well, Craig Skinner, who happened to be in his 13th season here at Kentucky, also served as an assistant for John Cook at Nebraska. And the Huskers will be in action here right after this match against Colorado. And you see the Penn State Regional. It's a three of four at, from the Big Ten. Well, Cass Brown. Her dad's in the stands cheering her on, loving the display that his daughter is putting on this afternoon. Seven kills to go along with seven blocks as well. One of five seniors for this program and has helped to build a great program here in Lexington. As we look back over the last five years and see the champions, Texas won it in 2012, Penn State won in back-to-back -back seasons. Then the championship returned to Nebraska. They won it in their home state on the court in Omaha, and then last year it was Stanford. And of course the road to the championship for Nebraska in 2015 came through Lexington, and they return here again this year for their regional. You see Penn State and Stanford been to all 36 NCAA tournaments. That's the most. They're tied for seven national championships apiece, but you think Texas, they have been 
in the hunt uh, several times. Eight of the last nine, they've made it to the semifinals with that national championship coming in 2012. Of course, we'll see Nebraska in that match coming up against Colorado. And you think to BYU, who actually upset Texas in 2014. They were the Cinderella team. Mm -hmm. Heather Olmstead was an assistant at that time, and they are still the only unseated team to make it to the title match. She was an assistant for four years, coached under her brother, Sean, who is now the men's volleyball coach at BYU. Laying out for that one was Paddock over Ms. Lacey. And McKenna Miller on the attack, but Kentucky called for the net violation. So McKenna Miller getting another swing here in the fourth set as they continue with their interchangeable parts. And not only do they have a deep bench, but even on the court, their pins comfortable swinging from both the left and the right antenna. Pushed out to Avery Skinner right into the crawl of Martindale, Kentucky. Now 16-10. Strike from Lacey Haddock. Haddock now in double digits with 10 to go along with 19 from Veronica Jones Perry. We haven't called her name lately, but Avery Skinner is always there when Kentucky needs her. When you design a defense around Leah Edmond and Avery Skinner answers the call. How good does that feel for Coach Skinner? I think another interesting number tonight, Ashley Dushek with 11 digs here today. And Mackenzie Watson with 12 right now. Leah Edmond also with 12. So if you're going to try to keep the ball away from Ashley Dushek, Kentucky says that's okay because we got Mackenzie Watson and right back. Just try hitting it at her. On the other side, Mary Lake with 17. The Libero for BYU. And we haven't seen much offense from Madison Lilly this afternoon, but she's got it if she needs it. Second contact over. And most young setters go to an offensive move when they're in trouble, when they can't really make a play. No, 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 not Madison Lilly. She understands the game. She knows that when they're not expecting it, that's when you go to the dump shot. Jones Perry now with 20 kills. And Mosier again delivers in serve receive as Kentucky going after her across the backcourt and serve receive. And another nice pass results in a quick side out for BYU. Missy Whittemore, Tiffany Green here with you from Lexington, Kentucky. As the four seeded Wildcats down two sets to one to BYU coming up after this match. Missouri and the top seed Penn State Nittany Lions. You can catch that one for the time being on ESPN News. Excuse me, news. It starts at the top of the hour and then we'll be rejoined here on ESPN U when this match is completed. And Leah Edmond just seemed to hang in the air that time. You know, it seemed like she had all the time in the world to take a look at the court and decide where she was going to hit that one. Too strong from Miller. Well, Kentucky got out to a strong start. You mentioned the importance 
of being able to mount a comeback. They had to get it going early. They've done so here in set four, and they have not relinquished control as of yet. Nice dig from Duchek. And snapped over at the net by the setter, Lindy Haddock, number six in blue. Curry got a hand on it, just went the wrong way. And BYU now within five. Cozy Burnett there from the service line, creating some out of system looks. Kentucky just with a bump set there, no other options. And obviously, that's helping the BYU defense out when they don't have to worry about defending three attackers, just one. Just miscommunication there between Lily and her attackers. BYU is ready to capitalize on any and every mistake from the Wildcats. You know, it's interesting that last mistake there we mentioned early on about the fact that we've seen a lot of Darian Mack on the right side. And I think you're right. It was just miscommunication. She's played less ma less matches with Brooke Morgan on the right side. She was pulled so far into right front that she expected the attacker to stay in front of her. She felt like they had run out of room at the antenna. And Brooke Morgan felt like she still had room to go behind. So that's just a lack of playing experience together. There's a great look at Darian Mack, the senior who's been a huge part of the success of this team. Their big win when they took down number one for the first time in school history, taking down Florida. Darian Mack, a huge part of that. She can get really hot at the right antenna, and it's just another option offensively for this Kentucky team that's loaded. Well, Mack can get high above the net as Craig Skinner has Five seniors on this team, including Harper Hempel, who has been like the spirit animal and just cheerleader on the sideline, to go along with Brown, Duchesne, Franklin, and Matt. And of course, you mentioned Hempel, who has limited playing time of the five seniors, and yet she served an ace at LSU in a five-setter for Kentucky to win that in the fifth set on an ace from their fifth senior, Harper, Harper Hempel. What a huge match for her, one I'm sure she will always remember. I want you to say Harper Hempel. <laughs> I'm not even going to Three try. times in a row. <laughs> <laughs> and out of the timeout, service error. A rare one, just the second for BYU. They're really disciplined behind that line. Interesting, Tiffany, because I, you know, getting to watch these teams practice yesterday, so impressed with all four of the coaches in this region and how much they get out of a 90-minute practice. And one of the things I noticed from BYU, they took the court to serve, and what they said, the coaches said, serve right out of the timeout here. They want you to think about how focused they need to be coming out of the timeout. That's a key serve that you don't want to miss, as you just said. We don't see them as so often for BYU, particularly out of the timeout. And out of system, it was Lily with the dig. Bump set from Dushek and off the hands. And Brooke Morgan helps Kentucky get the point. We think about the defense of the Libero, but what's becoming so important in your role is your ability to secondary set. You have to make choices and hang the ball up there in a killable fashion. And Ashley Dushek so good in that role. Mm -hmm. And so good from anywhere on the court is Veronica Jones Perry. She leads them in kills with 4.8 a set, but she's averaging 6.7 coming into today's match. Just think, she broke her pinky last year, didn't get the playing time that she wanted or would have liked. She certainly made the most of this season, and so is Brooke Morgan making the most of her opportunities late in the year. And again, BYU unable to get a second block up on the right side against Kentucky. Luke Morgan has an open angle shot. With Kennedy ready, stepping up. The 
West Coast Conference co-freshman of the year. Again, last year she was a red shirt. She just watched and learned as she saw Amy Boswell and Whitney Young Howard. can't keep it in play and Kentucky has set point to tie this match up. against BYU here this afternoon. Only their second meeting as the Cougars won the previous one back in 1990. Missy Whittemore, Tiffany Green here with you. And when you look at how these two teams have played this afternoon, that hitting percentage for Kentucky has risen above 300 again. A point of emphasis for this BYU defense to try to hold them. And the fourth set is really the biggest discrepancy in terms of hitting efficiency as you see Kentucky go off for 343 and only 087 for BYU. Well, this is the first to 15 points. You must win by two, three sets of five. And uh, I think the Cougars bench is pretty loose going in to set number five. It's a good time. This is what everyone wants. This is what you play for, these moments right here. The question is, who's gonna step up and deliver? How about Heather Olmstead as she addresses her libero in her collegiate career. She missed the libero position by just one year. So she was a defensive specialist. Would have loved that opportunity to wear a libero jersey. And, of course, we know she is part of a uh, first family of volleyball, if you will. We've talked about her brother, Sean, who uh, has the men's team ranked third in the preseason pool at BYU. He has been the runner-up in the last two men's national championships. And how about their dad, Rick, who was a high school coach and coached Karch Karai as a high school player. Pretty incredible volleyball family. I love the connections. As Sean also went to the national championship for the Cougars. The winner of this one will either face the fifth seed at Nebraska Huskers or Colorado. And Craig Skinner is trying to hand over his challenge card as Brooke Morgan felt like that one was perhaps in and the point could have gone to Kentucky. We say that the start of the fifth set is so important. It is a sprint to 15. And when you see a coach pull a challenge card on point one, it tells you how important the coaches think the start of set five is. They realize how important it is to be the first team to five. And they're challenging whether it was a touch on the play or not. The player in question would have been Cindy Martindale as Brooke Morgan hit it down the line. She thought maybe there was a touch. I don't know, it was tough to see from that angle, but I don't, I'm not sure if the officials will have enough evidence to overturn the call on the floor was that it was out. If there's one thing that I've learned over the course of this season, it's how much you should appreciate the officials because I have a hard time making the call when it's slowed down for us and given it to and given to us at several different angles. 
So you realize just how hard their job is to make these calls. This volleyball game is played so fast and so hot. The call stands on the floor. There was no touch, and BYU gets the first point of this final frame. A lot riding on this set, a chance to go to the round of eight, put themselves in position to perhaps move through this regional and get to Kansas City. Two quick points for BYU. BYU hasn't had much of an answer for Avery Skinner. But here in the fifth set, finally finding a way to slow her down a bit. They go to number four in white again. Now she ties her career high and kills. Third time this season, she's eclipsed that mark. And how about the maturity of the freshman here, realizing it doesn't have to be the hard hit ball every time, but showing her range and her ability to change it up. Nice dig there from Edmund. All over. BYU, the bump set. BYU gets the point. Out 3 1. Kentucky has certainly begun to time the swing of Veronica Jones Perry very well. Her most recent kills have typically been off the block. That block is all over her. And too strong from Skinner. <laughs> And the Cougars stretching out this lead. You're just joining a sixth straight regional semifinal appearance for BYU. First time Kentucky's been back here since 2012. Right at Edmund, and it's 5-1. You said the first to five. You have to do it in five point increments because it goes by so quickly when you're trying to get to 15. And we've seen a lot, well not lopsided, really a back and forth match, excuse me, between these two teams. We said from the start they were really evenly matched, good offenses, excellent defenses. BYU tech took sets one and three, Kentucky two and four, and this is for a chance to advance. The winner of this one will play Nebraska or Colorado. And you, you, know, you talk about how well matched they are. How about how well coached these two teams are? And these teams have stayed the course. They've stuck to the game plan and obviously a good game plan on both sides of the net because they're forcing it to a fit. They're getting everything they can out of their own team and they're pushing their opponent to the max. We said yesterday we completely expected this one to be five, and as you said, it's living up to all that we expected and more. In this Kentucky region, you see Colorado, the only unseeded team. Kentucky really fighting hard to get that number four seed. They put together a great body of work. BYU, of course, four straight West Coast Conference titles, and Nebraska co-champions with Penn State, who's in action as we speak against Missouri, hosting the Tigers in Happy Valley. That's over on ESPN News. Lake right there on her knees at the net, and Kaz Brown and company From the very beginning, we said these Wildcats led by one of the best senior classes, including the fiery play of Kaz Brown, who is a force at the net. Scores a point defensively right on time for the Wildcats. Way to tool the block there from Lacey Haddock. Nice footwork by Lacey Haddock there to make sure she got her feet to that ball and give herself an opportunity to swing line. If she wouldn't have got her feet to that ball, all she had was angle. 
and the block would have really suffocated it. And Brown gets it to go down. Good pass, good choice, good execution, once again, on the slide, behind the setter. That cuts the lead in half. Got it to Burnett. Edmund hits it over off the hands of the Cougars. And here's Veronica jones Perry dug out by Gabby Curry. Edmund with the free ball. We've seen some nice digs, offenses, defenses. <laughs> to perfection right there is Leah Edmund. BYU forced to send a free ball over the net, and the gym went quiet. Everyone just waiting to see where would Kentucky go. No surprise, they go to their kill leader, Leah Edmond, Southeast Region Player of the Year. She delivers. 14th in the nation in kills per set. She's been engaged. Locked, loaded. Lily goes to her again. 13 to run. Oh, yeah. Gabby Curry again in middle back, making some big plays. A freshman defender for Kentucky. She wore the Libero jersey early this season when Ashley Dushek was out. She's the one with the big dig that allows Kentucky to convert and leads to the celebration from Leah Ed The pressure is on. You said at the top of the show, Missy, that number four, Kentucky, could they live up to their seeding? Two SEC teams, Florida and Kentucky, have they shown you enough? Regardless of the outcome of this match, I have to say yes. This is elite level volleyball on both sides of the net. And I don't think that you walk away from this one and think, oh, Kentucky didn't deserve that number four seed. They certainly earned it this year. They had a senior class to ride and they have a talented freshman class. It is such a combination of experience and talent and then this freshness of a top five seed in the country in their freshmen meshing together the depth of their bench and what we're seeing from Brooke Morgan, the defensive play that has been the cornerstone of Craig Skinner's Kentucky program. It comes alive in the play of Mackenzie Watson. She's not their, their libero. She's their right back defender and leading this team in digs at points during this match. You're seeing defense from their outside hitter, Leah Edmond, actually with 13 digs right now, leading the way defensively. So this is a team that is willing to grind out the long points, and I'm, I'm impressed with the way they've handled the pressure. Meanwhile, BYU is a team who's expected to be here. They've made it to the regional for six years in a row, and they want to get back to the national championship much like they did in 2014, where they defied all odds, being the first team unseated to reach the title match. And because they've made it to the regionals for six years in a row, to some extent, I think people take for granted what the Olmsteads have accomplished at BYU. That's not easy. Coach Olmstead told us yesterday we try to make sure our girls don't take this for granted and enjoy it along the way. You don't just show up and make it to the round of 16 every year. Locked, loaded, ready, aim, fire, whatever you want to say. Leah Edmond is dialed in. Another really nice delivery from Madison Lilly. You see, Leah Edmond is just in step. Those sets, there's never adjustments having to be made from the attackers. The placement is so nice. Cozy Burnett taking a big swing just outside, so we're tied at seven. Remember, it's the first to 15, must win by two. At eight, the first team to eight, these teams will switch sides of the net. We talked about Kaz Brown being an emotional leader, but so is Leah Edmond. 
She's a great voice. Her father there in the stands looking on. And she's also doing her talking on the court. You think Leah Edmond isn't serious about this? This is a tough rotation for BYU, Tiffany. Veronica Jones, Perry across the back row. They've decided to go with Danelle Stetler out on the left side where we typically see McKenna Miller. And the tip over from Emily Franklin, Kentucky now on a 4 nothing run. And frustration for BYU is that's a ball that they're very capable of playing up, and yet they watch that one drop. You can't afford to give away points at this point in the match. BYU is challenging whether Kentucky was in the net on that last point. That timeout also gives, it's not a true timeout, but this break also gives BYU a chance to kind of regroup. Didn't see anything there. We'll see what the official call is. The call is confirmed. As Kentucky was awarded the, the point, it stays that way. 9-7. I like the challenge by Coach Olmstead, though. It keeps the timeout in her pocket and gives her team an opportunity to take a little breather. One challenge remaining for each side, one timeout remaining for each team. How about Madison Lilly laying out to get that dig in order to keep it alive and set it up for Leah Edmund. And right now the difference to me is that Kentucky does not have a weak rotation. They are six strong in their ability to attack, or I should say five strong as they run a 5-1. There's never a weak rotation, and we've seen some rotations that have caused fits for BYU. Let's also point out that Ashley Dushek who is known for her defense, has also got eight assists tonight to help complement Madison Lilly. Again, out of system, but that secondary setter has come through. You know, I like to say there's a lot of tools that you have to have as a libero, and immediately we think about digging balls, but you have to pass balls and serve receive. You need to be a good server across the backcourt, and what's becoming a huge part of this position is that ability to make secondary sets. You know, that eight doesn't pop up there by random. Those are good choices on the part of Ashley Dushek. She's deciding if she's going to be the left antenna or right antenna, and then she has to hang a ball up there that those players can take a swing at. We've seen her send some really impressive probable balls up to Leah Edmond in left front and in stride Leah Edmond has created kills out of those on the other side if you're Heather Olmstead you're in the huddle how do you get your team to refocus not get frustrated and come back and do what you've really done all match which is play incredibly consistent well one of the things she's going to do here is make an adjustment as we see McKenna Miller make her way to the floor to be inserted into the match for Danelle Settler. So they're going to try a little different look, something that the Kentucky defense hasn't seen in a while. But I have to wonder if we'll see some backcourt offense from Veronica Jones Perry at this court in the match. At this point in the match, I, I kind of wonder why not? Why not give her a shot? There's Miller, 14 in blue, hoping to give a boost for the Cougars. from the middle and Cozy Burnett. Go to your seat. Cozy Burnett right down the middle. Three seniors in total for the Cougars. Once again, Leah and five kills to go along with the block this set alone. If you follow Kentucky Volleyball, this is a program that has been defined by their defense. And this season, they've got the offense to go with it. This is a different 
Wildcat team. This season, they're ranked third in the nation in hitting efficiency, fourth in the entire nation in kills per set. And we're seeing that make a difference in this match down the stretch. was really close to that. Madison Lilly able to just touch it up there. A quick one for Emily Franklin. Yeah, you see the great body control she has. The freshman setter easily a net violation for some setters, and she has great body control. Not only does she control herself, stay out of the net, but delivers a nice set. Yeah, Edmund not on the floor. Jewel, the serving specialist. And how about the senior? 11 and white, Emily Franklin. Kentucky in a tight base here because it's a front row setter. Only two offensive options. They're middle and they're outside. Who is a little shaky right now. Miller just inserted back into the match. Kentucky bets on the middle. Three blockers up to suffocate back. Miller takes a swing at it. Again, we mentioned she's inserted into the match because another Olmstead made an adjustment. Took Stetler out and Miller delivering a kill. to serve and close out BYU. Missy Winnemore, Tiffany Green, 